This next set of techniques is designed to help answer a very often asked question about cloth effects in that once you've got garments built and you've simulated them locally so that they fit over a character, how do you go about tweaking them or tailoring them a little bit more without actually having to go all the way back down to the pattern level in order to to make the changes losing effectively everything that you've done? Well, it can be done. Uh, it just takes a little bit of preparation beforehand. So I'm going to start with a simple example and then show you uh, something a little bit more realistic. So basically I've got nothing more than an editable spline. This is the original kind of cloth pattern. And I'm going to hold the shift key and clone it. And I'm going to make sure it's a reference. The reference is critical to this technique working. Basically what that allows me to do is work with the reference, building on top of it and keeping the original spline pattern as um, basically a template to work off of and to feed data into Garment Maker and ultimately cloth effects. So I'm going to apply Garment Maker to this object and I'm going to go down to Seam Subobject Mode. I'm going to select the two segment center seams and hit Create Seam. So that's ready. Nothing terribly impressive there. The cloth is going to be cloth itself. And I'm going to simulate local damped. Pull these two pieces parts together. Whoops, let's actually reset that state. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off gravity. What I want to do is pull these things together without any gravity whatsoever. So I'll say simulate local damped. And now that the panels stay perfectly flat for right now, and with the simulate local damped option, just in case you're not sure what that is, basically what, what simulate local does is it pulls these panels together and after each time step where the garments are in motion, it removes all the velocity data. So if I were to reset again here real quick and hit simulate local, you'll notice I'm getting a little bit of bubbling as these things get pulled together because the velocity data is being kept. So I'm going to uh, reset the state one more time. And now I hit escape. And so I've basically got a series of panels aligned the way I want. But now let's say the client comes in and says, you know, I don't want these to be perfectly square. I want them to have a little bit of a curved edge. So do I really want to have to delete both of these, move back down to editable spline, fix it, and then reposition these if they were positioned in a very specific manner. Well, you don't necessarily have to. So I go into my original spline. I'm going to move these around here just a little bit. There we go. So now I've got a subtly different shape. And now within cloth effects, one thing that's uh, really worth noting is that your reset state level reads back down to your garment level, your garment maker level. So this is kind of a handy tip as well, is that if you turn this on and off, you'll see how your garment is going to reset. So if I go back down to garment maker, if I were to hit reset state up here, that's what the cloth would do. Now, what I want to do is make sure that it preserves this state. Preserving a state means I click the preserve button and then I'll click Mesh It and Preserve. Now, another thing to do just before I click this, look at the pattern of the Delaunay triangulation here. When I click Mesh It and Preserve, these panels are going to remain square, but because the cloth is stretched and shrunk in different ways, this topology internally is going to change, which means that the cloth is going to start being pushed. So when I hit Mesh It and Preserve, you notice the triangulation changed. Uh, you can see I've got bigger triangles here, smaller ones here, because these things have got to be kind of stretched back out. Now when I go to cloth effects again, all I've got to do now is hit simulate local damped. And you'll notice the cloth now starts to move towards the new data. In fact, in this case, what I may want to do is if I See, if I hit Reset State now, it's going to go back to here. So I'm going to hit Reset State, go back down. I'm going to turn on Flat Panels, Mesh It and Preserve, back up, hit Simulate Local. 
And now this cloth is trying to return to its base shape. That base shape having changed earlier. There it goes. You can see that now, whoops, the panels now match up as far as the shape goes underlying. It's a pretty handy technique to use and you can see that they remained perfectly flat here. Now that's an awfully simple example for doing it. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to load up a generic male pattern and he's got a shirt that he's going to be wearing. Well, this is the original shirt, so I'm going to leave that up there. And then I'm going to shift clone it, making it a reference. I'll call it ref. And I'm going to apply Garment Maker to it. And within it, I'm going to go to my panel subobject mode. And I'm going to position these panels. In here, so as you get into more complex patterns, you're not going to want to have to go through this more than once. Here's the back panel. Let's rotate that 180 degrees. Whoops. Go and grab it again. There we go. And let's position it behind him. That's close enough for, for rock and roll. It's going to be kind of a night shirt here, a little on the big side. And I can show you a quick tip to shrink things down here in a little bit. Let's move that in. And now at these two panels, I'm going to move it across and up. So it sits above. And the same here. This is going to go over like that. So you can see I've got these panels here. Let's go to a curved surface. Let's bend them down just a little bit. And I'm going to rotate this thing just a touch. Move that into a better position. Let's repeat that process on this side. First thing I'm going to do is move it up. And then Move it down like that, so it's got a slight curvature to it. Rotate a little bit. There we go. Now let's create the the seams that go between these guys. So I'm going to go into seam subobject mode. I'm going to turn on edged facing. Let's blow this viewport up. So I'm going to do is grab those two and create a seam. I'm going to create that one and that guy and I'm going to make that one a multi-segment and then connect it to the sleeve. Now I know already that I'm going to have to reverse that one 